Martha Stewart wishes she has my eye for design because look at this bathroom. I could be working for her magazine right now making that cash. <laughs> okay, you know what? Never mind. Let me not like get ahead of myself. Bye. <laughs> Hey sugar cookies, welcome to my channel. My name is Alexandra. If you're new here, welcome. I hope to see you more often on this channel. And if you are a repeat viewer, thank you for being loyal and waiting for me. I did take a close to three week, if not three week hiatus, but that is not because I needed a mental health kind of um, break. What happened was, was that I was feeling creatively defeated, if that makes sense. I was building these fuck you money McMansions. And unfortunately, it like that creative spark met its final days. It did. And I couldn't continue building them because it takes a lot of effort to not only build them, but then do the landscaping and then furnish them. So I tried to outdo myself because I wanted to take this channel in a historical kind of direction and then build this one castle that I saw, but I couldn't make round rooms, I couldn't find the right wallpaper for the outside, so I felt defeated, and I had done it like three times, and I felt like I had wasted so much time, so I was like, you know what, let me just regroup mentally, let me do some things that I know would spark my creativity, which is obviously uh, surfing the Pinstagrams, I started going for like these long walks in my uh, burrow, kind of like just walking all up and down Staten Island <laughs> and there's a lot of like neighborhoods that are actually really really pretty and have some of the homes that inspired this build right now so when I was going on my long walks I saw this Dutch colonial home that not resembled this build but it I, I took the roof basically I was like I want the roof and I saw another build that had a very big bump out that had a lot of natural light that it looked like it had a lot of natural light pour in so you know in proper stalker fashion I decided to whip out my phone and take a bunch of pictures uh which to this day I'm very surprised that none of the owners or anyone who lived there came out and looked at me and was like what the f what are you doing who are you do we know you <laughs> um I don't know, but I, that, that's happened to me once, actually. There's this, on my block, there's this very historic home, and I was, like, looking around it because um, I was interested in the history, and the guy who was working on renovations inside the house sort of saw me peeking about, and he goes, hey, what you doing? And I was like, I'm really sorry if I make this weird or... Um, it looks like I'm trying to break in. I'm not. I'm just really interested in this home. It looks like a very historical property. And I saw that on the uh, facade of the building, it says circa 1860 something or whatever. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, he actually invited me inside. He was like, uh, you look like a good kid. <laughs> uh, come inside and I'll show you the house. Uh I'll be honest, like everything inside of me was screaming like don't go because I watch a lot of like NCIS, CSI, Law and Order, SVU, right? And so I was like, don't go, don't go. Like you don't know this man. But I was like, am I also gonna pass up on an opportunity to see the inside of a historic home? No. So <laughs> against my better judgment, I went inside. And he shows me this house and it's gorgeous. I mean it's beautiful. It like the what's it called the fireplace like the mantle of the fireplace um it was all like marble and tile and in there was real quotes from like Edgar Allan Poe I was like nah that's that's crazy that's beautiful um I don't know why I went on this tangent but basically what I'm saying is I often look at property to get inspiration so uh <laughs> I took a smaller build something that seemed more reasonable to me which is this Dutch colonial kind of inspiration house in the sims as it is you can't own two properties so I wanted it to be like a summer home looking thing I didn't want it to have a lot of personality per se because I don't know like if this is your second property you're not spending there that much time so it's not like you really you know put up photos or whatever I just wanted it to look like a classy Airbnb you know what I mean like that's what I wanted <laughs> And it actually turned out really well. I didn't forget like a lot of things. I know I have a knack for forgetting certain key pieces of furniture. Like I forget fridges and stuff, but I there's a lot of jump cuts in this video because if I had tried to truncate a two hour long footage, like it still would have been like 
40 minutes. So there's a lot of things I cut out, which is like furnishing and stuff like that. And I kind of jump back from the outside to the inside to different rooms. But that's only because I was still not creatively all there. And certain parts were more inspiring for me to work on as opposed to other parts. So I do jump back and forth. Now, one thing I did that I really liked was create an actual wet room. And uh, for those of you guys who don't know what a wet room is and are sort of like, I don't know, skeptical, (laughs) it's not as lewd as it sounds. It's not bad. A wet room, in essence, is like you have a bathroom and then half of it is sort of cordoned off by another separate room. And that is entirely dedicated to just water running, right? It's not a shower. It's not a bathtub. It's literally a wet room. And I found these really interesting cube-like seats in the couch catalog. Like, you know, when you scroll through the catalog, I found like these really cool couches. But they have like a very smooth surface. So I was able to add them in a way where it looked like one long continuous bench. So you could actually sit down while you're getting your, you know, wetness on. Ew, okay, well, (laughs) my problems. (laughs) I don't know why I said that, but yeah. Then I turned, like, I, I didn't know what to do with this bump out because I was like, oh, maybe I can use this as, you know, like during the winter, put in a bunch of plants that grow and... I was like, yeah, if this is a summer beach home, who's going to live here during the winter? That doesn't make any sense. So I turned it like into a second living room and there's like a bunch of seating. I guess like people can sit around and talk like during the night. That's really nice. You don't actually have to be outside. Like one of my qualms is like with the summer, I've been like been eaten by all of these mosquitoes. Like mosquitoes wake up every day and choose violence and I despise it. So for me, I would love like if in my house I had this sort of sunroom where I could sit and enjoy this, you know, the sunset or the sunrise and not actually have to be outside. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love being outside, but I hate mosquitoes, and so, you know, I want the comfort and the luxury of being indoors, outdoors simultaneously, but one thing I did, uh, completely different note, I don't know if this is going to make this not playable, per se, but I put a curtain over a door, and in my room, I took inspiration from my own room, where I have these translucent curtains over my windows. So it's not really there for privacy or for like blocking out sunlight, but it's really pretty when you open the windows and you have the breeze come in and it looks very flowy. And so over one of the bedrooms, I had the door, mm, over the door I put like these translucent curtains so that you could mimic that sort of feel because obviously in The Sims, the curtains don't move. You can't have the door semi-open, semi-closed. So I just, if it doesn't work for you and it makes the door inoperable, you can take it out. I won't be offended. I won't know, but I won't be offended. And um, I kept it like, you know, I I personally thought it was very Martha Stewart of me to do that. So (laughs) Uh, and there's several doors leading you out to several balconies. I don't know. So this one bedroom, I yeah, again, like I didn't like not every Sims because I personally don't know how people like to play their Sims, but not all of my Sims gameplay results in generations. Sometimes I just like playing with older adults because, (laughs) I don't know, I just like playing with like older adults in the Sims because toddlers are really demanding and I hate the thing where they like purposefully drop paint everywhere and I'm like, no, I don't want to have to scold you to stop doing that. So I play with like children, teenagers and up, right? Um, and I was like, you know, you don't always have to make a home playable for toddlers. Obviously, if you want that, you're more than welcome to download this lot and then change it around so that you have room for toddlers. But again, like it just didn't jive with my artistic vision, you know, and I think that's the greatest, you know, (laughs) way of this, of like, that's the greatest way of saying you don't want kids. It doesn't jive with my artistic vision. (laughs) Um, but I added like uh, a little like arts and crafts room. One thing I would change because I am my greatest critic is definitely put maybe a hot tub and get rid of the pool area. I don't feel like it was actually all that even and all that aesthetically pleasing now in the end when I look at it. But maybe I've just been looking at it for far too long. Maybe you guys like it and you could keep it. But I think I'm going to go back and change that for my own gameplay because I do want to use this lot in my gameplay. 
Um, but we're getting really close to the end of the video here, and I want to say thank you so much for staying this long if you are here this long. If you like this content or you like any other video on my channel, please consider leaving a like, a comment, and subscribing because that means that you like my presence, my personality, and the videos that I make, and hopefully want more. And I will try to make videos on a more regular basis for you. So anyway, bye. Love you.